This is a J Mix exclusive. Mm -hmm. I, it was a very remember, like a, a memorable session and everything. That's why, you know, even years later, I can draw back on it and remember what we were doing. What happened was it was, it was already, uh, there was a beat already made. And I believe Tupac already put his vocals on it and everything with uh, probably, I, I'm not sure who engineered it, maybe Lance engineered it or... Um, yeah, probably Lance, somebody else. But they recorded his vocals, and then uh, they told me that Devante wanted to come in that night, and he wanted to do some overdubs, which is basically adding more parts to the to the song that's there. And the thing was, he got he got like that the whole feel of it from uh, I think it's from Method Man's song "Bring the Pain." And so it was kind of, you know, it was kind of like that song. They were redoing and reinterpolating and sampling a whole lot of different songs for that album. So I think that's when he, they they put that song together. And um, then, um, you know, we were going to go from there. So, you know, like I said, Tupac had put the vocals down already on a basic beat that was already there. But there was no keyboards, there was no... Um, you know, there was no finishing touches on the beat or anything like that. He wanted to come in and do overdubs on it all. So they scheduled the session. They asked me if I would work with Devontae. I said, huh, Devontae's playing. I was like, that's tight. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'd love to work with Devontae. And it just seemed a little bit out of the realm of what we're doing with all the other hip-hop producers and the stuff that were in there. I just thought um, this would be a cool session. So... They asked me if wanted to do it, and it was, suppose they scheduled it, it was supposed to start at like 8 o'clock at night, and so, you know, I was there at 7 or 8, and, you know, I was waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and waiting, <laughs> and, uh, man, I, you know, like, I usually wouldn't go home until, basically, you just knew the session was just off, you know, and uh, somebody would probably come in and tell you, you know, hey, he's not coming in tonight, so... You can call it, but I just waited around, and no one showed up until finally it was about three in the morning, and uh, the studio was real quiet, real empty, and Devontae Swing walked in the room, and he, you know, had his keyboard, and he was ready to put some overdubs down and everything and finish up the beat that he had started. So Pac was already on it and everything. We He started, um, we hooked up his keyboard, and he started playing the piano part and I just remember he was so like, he was so concentrated on it and he was so he seemed focused on what he was doing he was really quiet he wasn't really just overly personal or anything like that he was just real straight business and everything you know so he started putting the uh, piano part down and I just noticed how eerie and creepy kind of that the, the beat was sounding and he was putting that weird dark feel on it with the piano and you know Devante you know he's a good musician he had he's got chops and he's, he's got these long fingers so he can play the piano part like really good and it was kind of like a I don't know I just kept remembering it was kind of like a tarantula or something just playing this piano part and uh it just seemed so cool and and uh really dark and eerie sounding that's that's what I remember about it we we recorded all those parts. At that point, like I said, he came in and it was three in the morning. So we finished up all those parts probably around four or five in the morning. And since the vocals were on and everything like that, he wanted to go straight to mixing. He just wanted to mix it right then and there that night. That's that's the night he put to uh, he, he dedicated to do to this for this song. So I went ahead and uh, pulled up the mix. And uh, we started blending everything, and, you know, I mixed Tupac's vocals in there with it, and I started adding some of those drops that are in there, and uh, I think there's like a little telephone effect kind of thing on his voice at some point. There was already some guitar on it, I think. Uh, Ricky probably played that part. Ricky Rouse. And, uh, I mean, you know, this was, 
this was like 20 years ago, so it's hard to remember all the details, but I do remember uh, a lot about the session because it was, just so, it was so different than all the other sessions I was working on. I mean, from what I remember, he played the keyboard that he brought in right there that we set up on the credenza in the control room, and that's why I can remember watching him play it. So the keyboard part from, you know, from all my accounts was he played that part right there, and it wasn't a a real, like, sample of a grand. It was just right off of that keyboard that he had right there. We started the mix probably at, like, 5, 6 in the morning, and we ended up finishing it. I mean, it didn't take too long to mix, you know. It, it was a pretty uh, simple, basic beat, and, you know, the vocals and everything was, you know, they were all tight and everything. So um, I remember he just had, like, a background track on it and stuff, and it wasn't much different from the beat because it just stayed the same throughout the whole thing. That's why I did a lot of drops in it to bring stuff in and out and make it change up a little bit. And uh, I think it probably was finished up, I don't know, probably nine, maybe eight, nine in the morning. And we were done with the mix. And I printed it. And it was good. He left. And I was like, wow, that was, that was really something. <laughs> They asked Devante, I'm not sure exactly how he got on board with that. I, 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 I'm pretty sure he and Shug had a relationship at some point where, you know, he asked him to do a song on there, and, uh, you know, he probably, he probably just came in and did that song. I'm not sure how he's feeling about it or anything. I think, you know, he seemed real into it. But like I said, he was real quiet. It was real late. It was kind of like, you know, it was the first time I met Devontae. So, I, I, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how he was. Now, later on, he ended up, you know, I own a studio, Hollywood Way Studios out in Burbank, and he ended up being there for like pretty much nine, ten months or something like that because he, uh, you know, he was in one of the rooms making this album that actually never came out. But he... Um, he was a lot different than when I when I was talking to him at the studio. You know, he's way more personal, way more, um, you know, into the into it, talking to me and asking for me, you know, for a few things here and there. But um, you know, he was, he was pretty easy to deal with, really. You know, he just kind of stayed in his room and <laughs> did his album. He'd see him now and then. But uh, I remember uh, he got. Yeah, actually, Snoop came by the studio one time, and he got Snoop to drop a verse for him on a song that he was doing for that album. But I don't, I, I don't think that album ever came out. But um, he's a pretty cool dude. I mean, you know, I, as far as I was concerned, I, I never had any problems. With, you know, I liked him, and uh, I just remember that session was just so um, it just seemed dark. And it was so quiet in the studio, you know, because it was like, like it was three in the morning and, and it just, there was no one else there. It wasn't like the usual party that was in a room. It was just me and him. And, uh, you know, it was, it was kind of a different type of feel to the whole thing. But we mixed it. He loved the mix. Everything came out great. You know, Pac liked the mix when he heard it. I think it was one of the, best beats on the on the record really like I mean Johnny J came up with some cool stuff too but um, I really did like that beat a lot I thought it was you know just so different than some of the other stuff that was on there and Pac just killed it you know he killed it and he come out of some astral plane or something like that man. I didn't even know what that was but I did look that up and it's some sort of realm of existence in a different plane Yeah, you probably have to ask Devante because from what I remember and what I, you know, I uh, what I knew about the song, it came from from Method Man's No More Pain. But I'm not sure if he sampled that and added it in. I don't think so. I think he just reinterpolated it. He played the whole thing basically over. And um, as far as Timberland, I mean, he might have got that beat because I don't know every Timberland like there is, but I think that, uh, I mean, it was new and fresh to me right then and there. 
That's what I remember. This is a J Mix exclusive. What up, we shot up?